Hello everyone, this is Dr. Irfan Kamruddin Andani. Today we will start our new series on orthodontic tooth movement. And today the topic we will discuss is that what is the biological reaction of tooth and its supporting structure to light orthodontic force, whether you are applying that force with removable appliance or fixed braces. Before going into the detail of the reaction, you must know that what is the anatomical structure of teeth and periodontium. We all know that the root of all the teeth is lined with cementum in which periodontal ligament fibers are inserted. This is periodontal ligament. On the other hand, ligament fibers are inserted into alveolar bone proper, which is the lining of alveolar socket and it is a part of alveolar bone. We also call it lamina dura or cribriform plate. Why do we call it lamina dura? Because this is highly mineralized layer and because of that it appears radio opaque thick sheet in radiographs. Lamina means sheet and dura means thick. We also call this layer cribriform plate and the reason is that it is a very porous structure. Because of these pores, PDL act as a shock absorber. This is alveolar bone. Now let me go into some details about the periodontal ligament. We all know that periodontal ligament is also a connective tissue. So just like all the connective tissue, it also has fibers and most of them are collagen. Some oxytiline fibers are also there. Just like other connective tissue, it has cells which includes fibroblast, most of them osteoblast and cementoblast in periodontal ligament area. There are also osteoclasts and cementoclasts, undifferentiated mesenchymal cells lymphocytes, mast cells and macrophages and epithelial cells. And the third component of all the connective tissue is tissue fluid. Yes, periodontal ligament is also a fluid filled chamber. Apart from that, it also has neural and vascular components. Now let's see that how does periodontium react to the applied orthodontic force. Initially, when the force is applied, whether it's heavy or light, initial reaction is the same. The tooth moves but along with the alveolar socket because the fluid filled chamber PDL, the fluid is incompressible. So the tooth move along with the whole socket and that results in the bending of the alveolar bone. This you can understand with the example of a tree if you try to pull this tree towards you with the help of a rope. The tree will bend in the direction of force, but there will be no change in the orientation or length of the rope. Similarly, when force is applied for a second, the tooth definitely moves, but along with the bending of the alveolar bone and there is no change in shape or size or orientation of the PDL fibers. Just because that tissue fluid is still there and PDL is still a fluid filled chamber. This thing you can even feel if you have normal overjet, just press upper central incisor lingually. Immediately you will feel some interference. What is happening? The tooth is moving along with the alveolar bone. Now this is the beauty of nature what God has given. That when you masticate there is a lot of pressure on your dentition. But because of the incompressible tissue fluid your teeth do not move a lot. Now what happens? Because of this alveolar bone bending there is generation of electrical signals. And this has given rise to first theory of tooth movement which is known as piezoelectric theory. The proponent of this theory believe that because of these electrical charges there is activation of bone forming and bone resorbing cells and that results in tooth movement and alveolar bone remodeling. But in this presentation my focus is on biochemical response in the upcoming slides. In orthodontics, you do not remove the orthodontic force in a second, but you keep on applying that. So what happens when you have kept that force for 1 to 2 seconds? Now the tissue fluid will start to squeeze out into the alveolar bone proper. 
because alveolar bone proper is porous and because of this fact PDL also act as shock absorber because it is meeting two main criteria of any shock absorber in the body it has fluid and it also has porous bone in the surrounding just like cartilage yes cartilage is also shock absorber all the long bones or any other bone which is under heavy pressure like your mandible like your long bones why nature has covered long bones with cartilage because when you apply pressure on the bone directly it gets resorbed but when you apply force or pressure on the cartilage the fluid from the cartilage is released and is squeezed out and when the pressure is removed the fluid from the surrounding gets into the cartilage again in this way cartilage also act as shock absorber just like pdl now since the tissue fluid has been squeezed out of the periodontal chamber there will be some movement of the tooth within the alveolar socket now here you can notice that there is some stretching of the PDL fibers and in some areas there is compression of the PDL fibers. But here one more question arises that as I told you that most of the fibers of PDL are collagen in nature and you cannot stretch collagen then how PDL is getting stretched. In other words you can stretch rubber band because of the elasticity but you cannot stretch rope and PDL fibers are just like rope not rubber band so how can you stretch it the answer is that PDL fibers have wavy pattern get a closer look in the orientation of PDL fibers initially you can see that fibers are forming a wavy pattern and when the force is applied and tooth is moved these fibers are straightened now two kinds of areas in PDL have been developed because of the orthodontic force. PDL fibers which are under stretch, they are under tension and other fibers have been compressed or you can call them under pressure. So this has given theory, pressure tension theory of tooth movement. From here there are two kinds of biological reactions depending on the magnitude of your force. If you have applied light force, the reaction is different. And if you have applied heavier orthodontic force, the reaction will be totally different. Now you must be thinking that what is light and what is heavy. If the force magnitude does not occlude the blood vessels completely in the pressure area, we call it light force. And if your applied force is heavy enough to occlude the blood vessels completely in the pressure area, then it is heavy force. So, if you have applied light force for 3 to 5 seconds, the blood vessels will be compressed in the pressure area and there will be dilation of the blood vessels in the tension area. And because of the compression, there will be reduction of the blood flow and that will result in hypoxia simultaneously because of the force few cells will get damaged even collagen will get damaged and this mechanical distortion will result in the release of prostaglandins and leukotrins how does that happen we all know all the cells have cell membrane made of phospholipids and when the cell membrane is damaged it releases arachidonic acid and through cyclooxygenase pathway prostaglandins and through lipooxygenase pathway leukotriene is formed so within few minutes after the light force application you will notice that prostaglandins and cytokines are released in the periodontal area and these cytokines and prostaglandins cause activation of cells through second messenger system which is cyclic amp so after light force application there will be recruitment of osteoclast in 48 hours the cells present already in the pdl space will get activated we call it first wave of osteoclasts and through blood flow many osteoclasts migrate into the pdl space and we call it second wave of osteoclast this shows osteoclastic activity will start in 48 hours however for that you will have to apply force for at least 
four to six hours in a day because cyclic amp is not increased if you have applied force less than this duration so minimum duration of any appliance wear should be at least six hours or more not less than that these are the osteoclasts which are now activated and firstly they will start resorption of lamina dura since they are eating the bone inside out we call it frontal resorption so if you have applied light force there will be movement of the tooth within two days according to william prophet and the bone resorption pattern is frontal resorption simultaneously there will be appearance of osteoblasts as well and they will start forming the bone and in this way bone remodeling is started within two days of light force application now remember one thing that tooth movement is a traumatic inflammatory process like other parts of the body pdl also needs a healing period in which these fibers will get reattached so that healing period should not be less than three to four weeks according to william prophet so that is the reason why we do not call for appliance reactivation before a month so it will give a good healing period to the periodontium so this is the summary which you can memorize as well thank you very much